Hey, uh, welcome to the uh, first in a long series of Guitar Shop podcasts. I'm just calling it Guitar Shop Podcast. I didn't even talk about that with you guys. Specifically, uh, we are at Wade's Guitar Shop in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, in uh, the, the beautiful Midwest, the North Coast. Um, this podcast is going to be about all things universally that kind of surround the world of a guitar shop. So uh, guitars, equipment, musicians events, things like that. Uh, I'm Wade, Wade Stark of Wade's Guitar Shop. Uh, this is uh, my right and left hand and sometimes reverse guys at the shop here. This is uh, Dan Hintz. Hello. And uh, Alex Ballard. Donde esta? <laughs> uh, that's our boys. Uh, <laughs> we also have a website, wadesguitarshop.com. That's all one word, no punctuation, wadesguitarshop.com. We're on the web. Check it out. Information about the podcast will be there. Um, Specifically, uh, today we've got a, a couple different stories that we've uh, put together. Um, first one we are going to take a look at is uh, Dan, uh, who is quite the uh, gearhead, especially when it comes to effects pedals. Uh, did a little review on the... Hopelessly uh, addicted. Uh, to, yes. uh, what, what do we got here, actually? The, uh, the Boss uh, DD20, this little guy right here. This beautiful little delay pedal. The Giga Delay. Yes. AKA. 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 AKA the Giga, Giga Delay. Delay. <coughs> Which doesn't look as exciting right now as it will in the demo. With all the flashing lights and the beautiful the, things it can do. But. Here's the demo right up here. Okay, hey guys, how you doing? Um, I'm going to do a little segment. I'm going to demonstrate uh, this, this little guy right here. This is uh, the Boss DD20. Um, this is kind of a cool unit. This is kind of the, uh, in my opinion, the, the best delay that's out on the market right now. It's got the most features on it. Um, I found out about this delay because I was using uh, the, the very popular Line 6. I think it's the DL4. Um, uh, that, that one kind of uh, had, a little, had a little incident with it where uh, it got wet. Um, which is a whole other story, <laughs> but uh, for, but uh, I wanted to replace it, and I, and I actually um, went out looking for something that was um, had a little bit more features and and was uh, has less less handicaps than the uh, the, the DL4. Uh, cool thing about this unit, um, you can store four presets in this guy, and that, those are represented by these little. Uh, they can toggle through these guys. Plus, there's a you can do a preset uh, that's on board. Uh, it's kind of laid out just like a, a normal old boss pedal, um, but with more features. Uh, what's cool about it, um, well, let me, let me get into that. Uh, as you can tell right here, um, first thing that I really like about it is there's a display that shows the, the milliseconds of delay that you've got. This has got a kind of a cool, the, the very first, first mode on it's called Twist. So what you can do is just set it like a normal delay. I'm going to put it on the floor here so I can put my foot on it. Uh, this, this, this is in the boss's uh, compact uh, twin pedal. So obviously you can see there's there's two pedals on here. It's about as big as as two boss pedals. That's another really cool thing I like about it. It's pretty small considering all the things it does. But this first uh, button here is going to do uh, what we we call the twist function, which is uh, you just set it up like a normal delay. And I'm going to play a little. Just set it as as a normal. This is about 350 milliseconds. Um, but what's cool about it is when you when you're feeling pretty uh, pretty dangerous. You can um, you can grab and just just hold down on that very first button, the button to your to your left. It would be, and it's gonna it's gonna twist. It's gonna almost simulate your, like you're going down, grabbing the feedback of a of a delay and the time, and putting it up up and down. So, so you can tell it's gonna get kind of wild. Not 
not for everybody, but uh, <laughs> pretty darn cool. Um, they've also got a mode on there, uh, mode two, which is which they're going to call warp. These these two fir these first two modes are, are digital delays. Um, there is a tone knob on here. I'll get to that. Um, but what warp does is kind of simulates your kind of the, the dub sort of sort of uh, delays that that kind of trail and keep trailing while you're playing something else. Um, so I'm going to have it set exactly the same as I did on Twist, um, but I'm going to kind of show you what it does. It grabs one of the notes and just keeps on on repeating. So as as you can tell, I only have a few repeats there. But if I hold down the uh, the warp. It'll grab that note and it'll pl it'll play it infinitely as you keep that that foot down, and you can play underneath it, and it'll keep going on you. As soon as you take your foot off, it'll bring you back down to the uh, the the set of the, the feedback setting that you've got currently on the pedal. That's kind of cool. Packed in this delay, you've got uh, a tape function that's going to simulate the Roland uh, space echo, which is very cool. Um, you've also got an analog mode, which is going to uh, simulate the the Boss DM2, I believe it is. It was the first analog compact pedal that they put out. Uh, very cool modes um, on here, and, and we'll probably get a close up, but uh, we'll get a close up of the the panel. But you've got a tone on here, which is nice too. Even if you're using a, a, a d digital delay, you can um, you can kind of roll back on the highs or or accentuate the highs if you want a very percussive sort of delay sound. Um, analog is typically going to be a, a pretty uh, pretty dark delay as it is, but it has a sort of semi-distorted uh, lo-fi quality and it's nice to be able to tune in how lo-fi and how you know how dirty it's going to sound, which is kind of what that tone knob does. Um, there's also reverse mode on here, which is, which is very cool. It's probably the last thing I want to talk about. Um, reverse mode on this pedal is kind of, this is kind of the newest Little uh, little trick I found about this pedal. A lot of uh, I don't know guys like me who like uh, these these very weird sound effects and things like that, and and try to push pedals into different realms and make them do what they're not supposed to do, sort of. But uh, you know, sort of make them do something wrong, but it sounds very very cool. Um, the reverse mode on this is a little bit different than the reverse mode on on like a DL4 or Boss's uh, DD6. It's it's or it's actually cut up in segments, so. Um, let's see, I've got it at about 497 milliseconds and you'll see it kind of, there's a gap there and it kind of starts over. Sort of reminiscent of the old Eventide uh, backwards delays that, that, that uh, were out. So it's sort of phasey, this is, this is kind of cool, this is kind of the last thing I want to show you. This is a, a little trick that, I, that I've started to incorporate into the, the music that I'm doing. Um, I'm going to set it at a real, real low millisecond, probably about 120. And what I'm going to do is uh, show you just a, just a weird little thing that, that I've stumbled across on here, which is uh, probably not useful for <laughs> most music, but somewhere it's going to make it in there. Uh, I'm just going to slide on my first finger, uh, probably you know from zero up to the 12th fret, and it kind of has this weird glitchy um, sort of out of tune. <laughs> Let me turn that up a little bit. So playing a riff, it's, it's kind of cool because as you can tell, it's, it's almost like a tremolo. It, it cuts that, that reverse up into sections. And if you veer from that pitch-wise, it's going to kind of confuse the pedal and it's going to give it a sort of out-of-tune warble. Here, I'll put some distortion on it. So, as you can tell, it's a delay pedal, but it does a lot of, lot of really cool other things as well. So, but that's uh, that's the demo on that. I really, really hi highly recommend picking up something like this. I think it's, like I said, the best delay pedal on the market right now. Okay, uh, that's very cool. And you know, I actually had no idea that the Giga Delay did everything that it did because you guys are mostly doing the pedal demos around here. So when that kind of thing pops up, customer comes in and says, "Hey." what do all the features have on this particular pedal, man, I am quick to go to one of you two guys because you are the go-to guy, so uh, it's I'm, true. I'm it's, pretty blown away. It's tough. I mean, I was able to show, um, I think, probably only about 35% of what that pedal can do. Um, I, I, I can't even get 
started with. I mean, it, it's it's tough to cram that into a. I mean, I could I could literally take a, an hour and a half showing you guys all the really cool stuff that that pedal can do. So. When you're not here, Wade, and you're not here, Dan, and I'm not here, the Giga Delay usually handles things. So. <laughs> I think it does. I think it does. Okay, so question. Um, so many people have been asking lately, hey, does this have true bypass? Uh, so first question is, I mean, does that pedal have true bypass? And for that matter, you know, for, for those of the people out there who are asking the question and don't even know, what is true bypass? Uh, true bypass is actually a way of... Uh, connecting, uh, it's, it's the purest form of connecting through a pedal. So you've got, you've got your input, you've got your output, obviously you need a way to connect through that, you're connecting through the switch actually. And on a, on a boss pedal like that, what it is is a momentary contact switch, so you can't really, it's electronically controlled, so there's a buffer inside the pedal. What's interesting about that pedal, I, I mentioned in the, um, in the demo that I s had switched from that and, and, and had not replaced the um, with the boss line, or the, the, not the boss, but the line six uh, DL4, which you use. Yes. And I think you've, you've seen this where it's, it does color your tone somewhat. Yeah. And that is a true bypass pedal. So if somebody's out there is a purist and, and is, is very um, interested in that sort of pedal, the DL4 is true bypass. But what I've noticed, ironically, about the, um, the Giga Delay versus the, the Line 6 pedal is the fact that the, the Boss pedal does not color my tone whatsoever. Right. Yeah, <coughs> don't use output or anything. When it's on or, or when it's off. I mean, it's, it's a, imperceivable to me, but, but when the uh, Line 6 pedal is on or when, it, when it's engaged and you're, you're using the, the delay, it's, it's boosting or it's cutting a little bit. I mean, there, there are some fascinating delays on it. Kind of homogenizes the guitar tone a little too. It's like I've noticed hard this. to tell whether you're playing a Strat or a Les Paul. It's ball, true. You know. It's true. Yes. So. Yes. But um, but yeah. But um, I think there's there's no. I mean, uh, there's a lot of true bypass fanatics out there, and I, I don't think this is a pedal that that should be uh, this is something you should be afraid of when it comes to this one. The four presets that are on it. Um, does yes. it have Does it have a built-in internal battery that stores the memory? So once you you power down or take out your power supply or your battery. Your, your presets still stay in there? Absolutely. Very cool. Absolutely. I've been using one for about three years now and never a problem with losing presets, which is really important. I think when it comes to consistency, you're, you're playing gigs, you're, you're recording with it, you know, you're trying to reproduce things live. There's never been a glitch as far as that's concerned. It's actually, and, and for that matter, I'm I'm afraid of, of if I ever lose this thing, I'm going to lose those, those programs. I mean, they're pretty easy to dial up, but... Um, you know, it's it's been very very. Um, how would I say? Um, really, uh, what's the what's the word? What's the <laughs> rock word? Rockalicious. <laughs> it's been rockalicious. It's been um, it's tasty too. If you lick Freak the side, it, it does taste like yogurt a little. Bit. Edgeramic. But uh, no, it's really reliable. That R word I was looking for. Awesome. I like I, I like I like the drummer in your piece. It was yes. <laughs> He's uh, good. He's good. He's got a good, good tone, good timber to that. Uh, Alex, today uh, we are going to take a look at something where you have put together a, a little recording demo on how to record uh, in a stereo image acoustic guitar. Correct? Yes. What do you want to tell us about that? Well, uh, just uh, one of the elusive uh, creatures to record is the acoustic guitar. It's a very difficult instrument to capture. And... Uh, it gets even more difficult when you use two mics. You know, obviously with one mic, you can just kind of move it around until you find the spot that sounds the best. But uh, when, you, when you use two, two mics, there's a couple different techniques or <coughs> procedures that uh, you can use to um, kind of control the, the, the image of the sound and uh, different ways that you can experiment. And, uh, but just some, some basic rules of thumb, which are, of course, made to be broken. Well, it kind of blows me away because sometimes when we're listening to a recording around the shop, you'll go, oh my God, that is just dead on a D28 in that recording. Yeah. And I'm like, what are you talking about? I mean, like, how you are hearing and how you know the signature of a, a D28 in a recording or when you hear, you know, a, an, an OM28 or something, you, you, you seem to have an ear for being able to pick that stuff out in a recording. Obviously, you, you do recording, right? Mm hmm Yeah, yeah. Um... Well, yeah, I mean, that's, I think, part of when you record a lot, you start to uh, 
so certainly when you're paying for it, you, you start <laughs> to notice things uh, that are going on, and thinking as you're recording, you notice instruments that are difficult to to work with, and some people do certain things better than others, and that's the neat thing about you know if you go to one studio with one engineer, they're always going to do everything the same. But as an artist, when you move from studio to studio, you get to see people using different gear and different techniques to record things, and and uh, you know if you take that information along with you, you end up with uh, you know you end up knowing sort of how things are done a little bit. You can you can start to integrate that into your own recordings and so on. So cool. Well, we're going to take a look at it. We had a, uh, in the recording, we had a little mic malfunction on one of the uh, two uh, cardioid condenser mics that you were using. So we, we redid the audio. Uh, so when you when you take a look at this, you're actually going to see one of the mics change uh, from what, what mics were you using initially? Uh, we were using a pair of uh, Shure KSM-109 small diaphragm condenser mics, uh, which are moderately priced and Ballpark nice. price on those guys? Uh, I think they're probably about uh, probably about two hundred bucks, I'd say, okay. a piece, something like that, or one hundred and eighty maybe somewhere. And then we uh, we swapped out with uh, the next most convenient mic we had, which was what an AKG C one thousand S, right. yeah, which is uh, probably a similar price range. All right, let's take a look at it. Oh, my name's Alex. I'm the uh, the guitar guy at Wade's Guitar Shop. Um, also have a, a bit of a home recording bug. I have a little studio in my house and uh, a lot of times when people are looking at acoustics uh, the topic of recording them comes up. Uh, so a lot of times I get asked um, about different techniques that people can use. So I thought I'd do a quick tutorial on recording acoustics. So here's a couple basic techniques that I usually recommend to people to uh, get started with it. So have fun, experiment, use your ears, and in the words of Joe Meek, if it sounds right, it is right. This is the uh, Coincident XY uh, placed close to the guitar. So those are the uh, a couple of uh, different ways to do a, a stereo mic setup uh, with two cardioid mics. Um, we can also introduce um, these are both uh, cardioid mics. We can also introduce a single multi-pattern microphone, which would give us uh, fig figure eight uh, omni, where it would pick up everything equally, and cardioid as well. Um, in that setup. Um, Obviously, we're going, not going to get the same stereo image, um, but it's going to give us a, a different sound quality, and uh, maybe we'll experiment uh, just a little bit uh, with uh, using a multi-pattern uh, microphone in a stereo setup. And very cool. I have never really, other than you know, a few pictures in magazines. Uh, I don't think I've ever really seen you know somebody set up and record acoustic guitar in stereo like that. So I mean, for me, good good little seminar. Oh, cool, cool. Yeah. Now how important is it, I'm, you know, trying to stay still, and, um, you know, when you're in the studio, um, 
you know, you feel it's very important to try to be um, aware of everything that's going on around you and, and the placement of the mics. How important is it for me to, I mean, when I'm recording in the future, um, how important is it for me to be sitting in one place and not move? I mean, is, is, are there that's, sound that's phase? A really, yeah, that's a really good question because uh, um, one of the, there's a variety of things that people tend to uh, talk about are specs on microphones. Um, and one of them is, is a, what a term that they say uh, is uh, off-axis response. So, so really a good microphone colors the sound less as you get off axis from it. Oh, so okay. with a with an excellent quality mic, you should be able to move around a little bit, lean forward, lean back, tilt forward and backward, and the sound should not change in timbre. Okay. Most mics, though, as you move off axis, tend to change in timbre. And the higher the frequency, the more that occurs. Is that more uh, so in a dynamic mic that you're going to get those sort of off axis problems? More so, yeah, in a... Uh, in a, uh, well, I suppose a really good uh, dynamic mic, um, you're going to have to be up close to it, so, you know. Sure, you're, sure. Uh, Yeah, I guess it would be more, more drastic. And those the, that, that yeah. we were using were those condenser condenser mics? Condenser microphones, okay. yeah. And then the pattern, you know, if you have an, you know, a cardioid mic um, versus a hypercardioid mic versus a wide cardioid mic, that's going to change the response characteristics. So a, wide, a single wide cardioid mic, you should be able to kind of move around a little bit. Okay. Because it's a big old heart shape. Um, a, a hypercardioid or supercardioid mic is a more pointy kind of thing, and that if we move off axis there, then we get trouble. But I'm not going to know that when I'm in the studio. So we'll be as <laughs> stiff as possible. We, we, will put, we will put notes on the website that will uh, talk about the, the different uh, shapes to the uh, the mics. It's talking about cardioid, hypercardioid. On these and whatnot. So we'll put some notes on the website related to this particular podcast so you can actually go to the website and check out and see some of the peripheral information that goes along with what we're talking about here. Uh, but a quick question, would you use a setup like that at all for live? I mean, does that apply just to the studio or are there similar miking techniques for a guitarist playing live? Uh, for a guitar, maybe in a bluegrass setting, you know, and we're in a nice theater where you're really actually going to try to utilize the, the stage and the acoustic instruments, yes, that's how you would, you could do it. Um, where it's applicable beyond that would be, you know, drum overheads. When you're recording drums, you're, you can do a, a, that coincident XY, or we can do a space pair, we can do a near coincident. You know, so those tech, those, anytime you're doing any type of stereo recording, those, those same sort of, uh, various techniques apply. What type of mic setup gives you phase issues you were talking about? Phase cancellation? What, well, what, how, how, what would you do that would, get, that would give you some phase issues and what would be the, the symptoms of phase issues when you're listening to your recording? Okay, um, well, you know, ultimately one of the things that people like about the, the near uh, coincident XY pair is that the, the, the capsules, um, you know, the uh, diaphragms are picking up the vibrations and they're so close to each other there's minimal phase shift because they're both mics are getting the same information at the exact same time anytime we separate those capsules there's a going to be a, a time more a chance for a time differential between the source and the capsules so um, you know so it's more prevalent maybe in a space pair because it's 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 more difficult to know if I hit the snare drum here and there's a mic over there and a mic over here that snare is going to hit those mics at two different times. And so when you listen to it in the, in the stereo speakers, uh, phase issues will, will cause sort of sometimes ping-ponging, where you'll hear a, a, a track kind of moving back and forth. Mm -hmm. in the stereo. Oh, it sort of flutters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I've gotten Or that. even, even a, 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 a sound, uh, not unlike a phaser, sweeping in and out sure. of phase as you move across the stereo image. It kind I of always thought that was my bad yeah. Tascam mm -hmm. tape. I, I in my recorder doing that. I can't help but crack up when whenever I see Alex go and the snare is over here and <laughs> the, Alex, Alex does a lot of recording and when we're around the shop uh, frequently he'll say, oh my god, that, that snare drum in that recording sounds like this and he'll grab a pen and hit a sheet of paper with it. <laughs> Which is my favorite snare sound. I mean, every <laughs> Eagles, sound. Every record, yeah. Eagles yeah. record has the, the paper snare and it sounds the mean amazing. paper. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's great. I think it's yeah. great. All right, cool. Hey, um, okay, here's an issue that came up recently, you know, and this is starting to come up more and more. Uh, 
because a lot of people are starting to buy their kids their first guitars at Target, at Walmart, at yeah. uh, Sam Goody, or on uh, on the infomercial kind of things, Esteban. Yeah, he does good repairs, <laughs> Esteban. Saw one at Walgreens. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so he I, knows how to service your I, guitar. I, I just need to sort of uh, just just kind of bring this up, you know, pitch to you guys what. What is your take? We, we're on the shop. We all, we, all do, we all do repairs. We all do setups. We all have to deal with these people coming in, coming in with these ninety-nine dollar guitars from from Target and Toys R Us and whatnot. There's nothing wrong. I saw a first guitar, a first act guitar at Walgreens. When I was picking up some medicine. Okay, Walgreens. <laughs> nothing wrong, with Walgreens. <laughs> <laughs> but I prefer to get Tylenol there. And not a stringed instrument. It's it just seems uh, a little. Uh, it seems scary, you know. I mean, it's it's like buying a car from a donut shop, you know. I mean, it's just it doesn't make any sense. Um, and I think the 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 biggest issue with that is I took this. I mean, it you know it it gives you the impression. I mean, the first thing it gives you the impression that a guitar is a toy, you know. I mean, in in some ways it's fun and it's and it's. Uh, you know, it's 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 lighthearted and it's something that you can enjoy and that kids can enjoy and it's you know it's not a grown-up thing per se. But um, it, what they're selling is is not good. I mean, what they're selling I think is going to give kids a false impression as to what what a guitar is and and how well a guitar is made and and you know the appreciation of a guitar is not going to be there. You know, when I was growing up, my father had guitars and it was don't touch those guitars that are in the corner and well what did your dad have what was his main guitar uh it was a 63 63 Stratica. fender Stratocaster. <laughs> yeah. so yeah don't touch the guitar definitely applied but you know it was on you know and as soon as he started they, the parents started going to work and i'm home for the summers as a middle schooler i'm like guitars off the, i hope dad doesn't but you know, it, it was it was different. It wasn't like, oh, here's your first guitar from Walgreens, and oh, this isn't fun, and this is kind of weird, and see ya. Like, like it doesn't work. I think most guitars don't work, or I'm doing it wrong, and you know, I'm I'm through with this. I'm done. I think it's going to impede people from from playing guitar. You know. Okay, Alex. A sy symptom of okay, you've you've worked on somebody brings in somebody brings in. Back phone. Phone. That's our first caller. <laughs> first caller. Of, of the Jocelyn, podcast. do you have a phone for us? Grab it and just hand it to me. This is our first podcast caller. Better be good. Oh. Hello, podcast. Now, why did you buy that guitar at Walgreens? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> okay. Okay, sounds good. We're right in the middle of shooting. So be right there. And she hates it. That's out. awesome. I thought we had the first call. <laughs> She's uh, out back. Okay. Has to get in. Oh, sorry. Right. Jocelyn, can you, sorry. you let her in quick? Uh, it's my grandma. <laughs> the letter in there. Uh, Alex? I was about to say, you've, you've worked on them. Give me, give me a symptom of... A, Cheap guitar from from Walmart. What? It, well, it, it hits your bench. Just just name one symptom. Well, like, first, oh. first of all, uh, a lot of times they don't hit my bench. You know, ultimately, yeah, the frustrating thing is is that you can actually get a much better guitar for 130, 40 bucks at a music store than you can one of these fifty, eighty dollar, ninety nine dollar guitars. Okay. So it's just a, the difference between. You know, you still can't make a decent instrument for under a hundred bucks. But nonetheless, a lot of times I have to be the bad guy because someone comes in with a toy instrument with the bridge pulling up, and I have to go, you know, what an eighty-five dollar bridge reset or you know or whatever. But you know, usually I, I say yes, this could be fixed, but it's X amount of dollars in the repair out out. Uh, and so you know, I mean, bridge I, pulling I, up, bridge right, pulling frets up, popping up, bad tuners, tuning keys won't tuning hold, keys, nuts, plant uh, parts are made out of really cheap soft plastic. So and they say all wood, and that's all very pretty and badly laminated. There. Yeah, it, particles of wood. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
but yeah, I remember working on one on one of my benches uh, where the bridge was literally made out of uh, some sort of wood powder. I mean, it was like falling apart on my bench. I was like, it's interesting. It's probably one of the only things where the rule applies that it's better off to buy it used at a rummage sale than buy it brand new from the <laughs> store. <laughs> yeah. Not very true for, t for when, toaster ovens. When you're worried that you know, you're not even going to be able to you know, finish working on it and still keep it holding together, that's... <laughs> If I can get through this repair and not actually have to throw it in the dumpster. Yeah. Well, I mean, seriously, out there, I mean, there's there's parents then who want to encourage their kids to to play a musical instrument, and there are parents who either don't care or would want to discourage their kids if they said, you know, if I buy them a really crappy guitar, they'll play it for six weeks like they do their video games and everything else, and they'll be sick of it. Yeah. But I mean, th there's parents out there who seriously want to get something halfway decent for their kids, and they don't want to spend a ton on it. And I mean, this this is, I think, the warning to everybody. You know, it's it's not from the point of view of a guitar shop, hey, come and spend your money here. It's from the point of view, we're trying to save you from having to throw that money out and then having to start over. Yeah, it's the, not, stuff, the stuff is really bad. It's not an old-fashioned thing where it's like, back in the day, you used to have to go to big electronic stores to get this, the VCR, the thing that would play those, those film tapes. You know, um, whereas now you can go to Walmart and buy a, a DVD player for thirty dollars. It's not a it's not a, a technological uh, device that yeah, they is, don't stamp them out in a machine. Exactly, you know, it's you know. something that takes a lot of yeah. know-how to make, and it takes some craft to make. You know, it's not something that you can run through a machine and get. You yeah. know, so it's it's completely on the opposite mm -hmm. end of the spectrum. If anything, this should be proving to to people that this is totally the wrong way to go and, and that you should be coming to smaller stores and you should be coming to places that are that are very repair oriented and, and very in tune with with the instrument itself you know to be able to you know enjoy enjoy this this thing that you know we, you know this this stringed instrument this this piece of wood that has this strong string tension on it that could snap at any moment if you're <laughs> from Walmart you know <laughs> it takes a lot for that thing to stay together you know yeah. And I, you know, I mean, the, the sad thing is, again, is that, you know, the, those guitars that people are buying from Walgreens are not that much cheaper than no. what you can really actually get, not a top of the line, but certainly, you know, there's the Squire stuff and the Epiphone stuff and other brands that have cheap stuff that's not too bad and yeah. certainly going to get you, not discourage you from, from, you know, we'll stay in tune and, you know, not discourage you from playing, you know, so it's just... I'm not worried. Pays to shop just a little bit, you know. I think time will prove yeah. that we're right. Hey, and at guitar shops like <laughs> like ours, you know, we we don't bite. You can come in at any time, shop like this. Most shops you can walk in. You and don't have you to buy anything. Don't feel like you even like you're even looking like you have to buy anything. You know, the some of the big box stores, yeah, their their salespeople are under uh, the commission system. They might try and, you know, pressure you a little bit, but, you know, typically the mom and pop shop, like a guitar shop like this, you walk in, you can ask us questions anytime. We're not concerned whether or not you're going to buy a guitar, but guarantee if you need a guitar, when you come to some place where you're going to get information, you're going to appreciate it, appreciate that information. And if you, if you do need to drop the money, if you've got to go, you know, just a hair more than you are at Walmart, you are going to get a decent guitar and a shop to back it up. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I'd rather it felt right. You know, I'd, I'd discourage someone buying something over making a hasty decision any time. Uh -huh. yeah. I think it's interesting. There's a lot of uh, guitar shops now. You know, there used to just be music stores with everything in it, and, and now you're finding even more sort of a, a split up of... I mean, again, we're a guitar shop, you know. I mean, going to a music store over, over going to Walgreens is what is one <coughs> thing. But, but also just the idea of going to a place like we don't sell vacuum cleaners here, we just sell guitars here. We just know guitars, we just focus on guitars, you know, and uh, that's kind of a cool thing. And there's guitar shops out there, you know, so why mm -hmm. go to the, why go to the, uh, you know, the people that sell what? eight million of everything. What's the movie though right now with the vacuum cleaner and the guitar again? Jocelyn Ewan, what's the name of that movie? The woman and the vacuum cleaner and the guitar? And I saw a Grindhouse it's where she flies and the, with the shotgun on her leg. They, she doesn't they, have a guitar on her leg. Well, the, the, they, won, they won an Oscar for for the song or something, but uh, it was made on a hundred thousand dollars indie film. They Once. got what? Once. Once. Bingo. That's it. Vacuum cleaner and guitar. Okay. Anyway. Uh, no idea. Less. But if you want to buy both of those things in the same place, go to Walmart.
Boom. Sorry. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, last I'm one. talking to you, camera A last and camera B. <laughs> <laughs> hey, take your pill. Yeah. <laughs> all right, last one. <laughs> 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 okay. okay. Right, right. Um, <clears throat> last thing uh, we're going to cover tonight. Uh, I was recently flipping through uh, Guitar Player magazine. I subscribed to Guitar Player magazine. Uh, my son, who's 13 and helps me out at the shop, he's just starting to get into guitar these days uh, in order to kind of have uh, stuff to look at and talk about uh, guitar related at home. We subscribe to Guitar Player and Vintage Guitar Magazine, both really good uh, monthlies. Uh, but Guitar Player Magazine recently has added a number of ads throughout their magazine advertising their own website. Um, like a lot of magazines, I think they are starting to, to realize that uh, the future of a lot of magazines is going to be online. You know, the, the uh, newsstand mags are not going to be what they were uh, 10 years ago, and certainly, you know, it's, it's changing already right before our very eyes. So, I've loved Guitar Player Magazine ever since I was a kid. I've got boxes of back issues down in my basement here and at home going all the, all, back, all the way yeah. back to the mid-70s. Uh, I love Guitar Player Magazine. Um, so I wanted to see what they're doing online right now. Is it going to be, you know, a similar experience for me? Obviously, you know, it's the internet, it's a computer. You're sitting down. You know, you're not, you don't have the tactile like, uh, notion of, of having this magazine in front of you that you can, you know, take in the car and on the plane or whatever. But I love a good website too. I love technology. So I checked it out, and uh, you guys can check it out with me. Hey, if you're like me, you probably read. Guitar Player Magazine. I've been reading it for years. They've been out since the late 60s. Uh, a lot of great information about guitarists and their gear, uh, product reviews, uh, good little tutorials on playing techniques. They always have their little section in the back with, with techniques from famous players and some, some really great uh, advertising. I've always been a, a big fan of the, of the bright colored ads. I always love flipping through here and looking at ads and looking uh, at information about gear towards the back of the magazine. Uh, but what I've noticed recently is they've been advertising guitarplayer.com, their website. I didn't even know they had a, a website yet, but as a lot of magazines and newspaper, newspapers are having to do these days, they're having to move a lot of their content to online to try and drum up new advertising business, which is where they get most of their revenue, not from subscriptions, but from the advertisers. So we're going to check out guitarplayer.com today and see how the website stands up to the magazine. When you first get to the Guitar Player homepage, you're greeted by a pretty good balance of site indexing, headlines, and ads. Throughout the site, many of the ads come in the form of flash-based animation, those movie-like animated ads. I personally use the Firefox browser and the flash block extension to block those ads as they are generally annoying and always buzzing in your eyes while you're looking for your desired content. After clicking to allow them to turn on on this website, this particular batch is not too bad. The general layout of the site isn't too bad. Images are actually quite nice as you can blow most of them up with a click to see them in greater detail. I'm a gear geek, as I'm sure many of you are, so I spent a generous amount of my first exploration of this site looking at product spotlights, and there were a lot. Quite a bit of the content on this site is sort of hidden, so if you explore using the search aids at the bottom of the page or the search word box, there are many layers of stories and info buried in the dark, dusty corners of their servers waiting to be discovered. The Guitar Player TV part of the site is all flash-based, so slow internet connections and smartphone browsing will be limited. The quantity of media is somewhat limited and ad-based, but the ads are reasonably short compared to the length of the stories. Hi, I'm Dave Hunter, and I'm here with the Zamatis GZA 300 Heart flat-top acoustic guitar. Most of the TV intros, as well as some of the ads, use mediocre metal riffs at volumes louder than the stories that follows, so be ready at the volume control. Hi, welcome to 
welcome the guitar player who's the real power and creep. In the end, I kept going back to the gear. I've owned my shop for 18 years and have been in the guitar shop biz for 25 and I've always been drawn to the equipment. So kudos to GP for putting a lot of info about guitars, amps, and accessories up there. All right, that was guitarplayer.com. Uh, first impressions, not too bad. Uh, a lot of content, but uh, lacking a little bit of the kind of content I would be looking for. I mean, I guess with all of the decades of the magazine, they've just been so thorough in their coverage of things. It just seems like uh, it's, it's on its way. Uh, Advertising-wise, I mean, there's some, some good images, good information about gear. Uh, a little wild with the little metal riff intros to the videos at the Guitar Player TV portion of the website. Um, overall, I think it's good effort. It's on the way. Uh, personally, for me, I prefer the magazine. I like to sit down and read a magazine quietly and get my information that way and really take my time thumbing through things. Uh, so, definitely check it out yourself, guitarplayer.com. For me right now, I'm going to stick to the magazine. And you make your own choice. Thanks. All right, there you go. Um, a little, <laughs> it's 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 got a lot of flash. It has a lot of a lot of heavy metal rips. I mean, that's I, I got to tell you one of those things right away. Every every video, every <laughs> corner you turn, you know the shredding. And you know, and in my mind, when I read Guitar Player magazine, I do not hear shredding. The nice thing about the shredding it's nice too that it is reminds you uh, that shredding exists yeah. still. <laughs> yes, I like how the shredding is eight times louder than any of the other audio on. Yeah, the, <laughs> well, everything starts with a with a pick scrape. Yeah. Um, it's like the DS one distortion. <laughs> it's, it's a really good website. I, I'm I'm impressed at the fact that um, you know you're able to to hear um, them doing demos of pedals and things like that. I mean that's something that you know. I mean when I was a kid. Um, you know, and I wanted a you know the ADA MP1 rack mount. You know, the thing that I that I had to save up seven hundred dollars to get, bribe my parents to drive me out to some you know a music store to buy, and finally go hear it. You know, it was like I didn't know. I mean, I had made up in my mind that I was going to buy this thing that was going to take me about four thousand lawns to uh, <laughs> to mow to buy, and you know, and then I get in, I finally hear it, and I'm like. This isn't at all sounding what I thought, you know. So it's it's very cool to have. What I did notice was, um, you know, hopefully as it as it develops, um, the um, a lot of the pages I, I was able to lose myself I as to, to where I was. I totally got lost. Too. You know, I mean, a lot of the pages look the same, um, and it's confusing because there's a lot of information on each page, and it looks like it's laid out in exactly the same place, and it's all the same color. Maybe I'm not brightest bulb in the batch. No, that's but that's exactly I, how I good. felt, too. I, I was like, oh, what happened? I'm, I was on a, a page, and now I'm like, how do I get back there? You know, mm -hmm. Which, I, I mean, I kind of got the hang of it, but it sort of forces you to, to sort of almost, it almost has a user interface. Yeah, it's got a, there's a, there's a yeah. squint uh, quotient, too. It's like squint a, factor. Yeah, yeah, squint factor to it. Like, wait, where am I? Okay, well, okay well, I mean, that's th exactly right. There's a thing that I noticed on their, their website that a lot of websites give into, and that is seeing how much stuff they can pack on a single page sure because they're afraid they're going to leave something out and that's a loss of potential you know advertising dollars or somebody's going to want to see to see this particular patch cable or something and if they don't have a link on that page they're going to lose it and what you wind up with is a lot of clutter and in, in the case of a, a website different from the magazine is it's really tough to tell what is an ad and what is part of their website. When, yeah. I'm, flip, when I'm flipping through Guitar Player, sure. article, ad, article, ad. It is just, it's just <laughs> boom, boom, boom. It's like right. trying to find a door handle on a race car. It's like, oh, that's the Tide sign. I keep <laughs> trying to open the Tide sign. It's not. Uh, <laughs> yeah, sure. I'll go through the window. Oh, but that's a color, that's a window uh, endorsement, yeah. Sorry. A lot of potential. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's, it's Guitar Player, though. And the, and the thing is, you know, they have, uh, you know, what is it, like 40, Five years, roughly, about 45 years of doing the magazine. I mean, they have that much Huge. experience, that much information. I mean, their potential to, you know, to form this into the kind of thing that is going to be a, a force for guitar players and bass players and keyboard, whatever ones they, you know, 
they put that kind of effort into, it has that potential to have a force on the internet to to provide for the guitar community what the magazine does right now and has for all these decades, which you know has for me been awesome. I love the magazine. Sure. Um, <clears throat> I don't know how many people are like me, though, and really into the ads, but, you know, uh, when I was looking at some of the gear reviews, you know, it's the same guy in almost every review, you know, and it's, uh, I don't remember his name, uh, the, the young guy with the kind of long sort of Leaf Garrett look to him, you know. It's a good look. Yeah. <laughs> he, 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 he does a good job, but, you know, I, again, I mean, they're, they're definitely seeming to so far tailor everything on the website to you know, 14 to 20 year olds, right, right. you know, and I, I don't know if, 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 if they have the stats on, you know, who their readers are, but I have to imagine there's still a lot of people my age and older, you know, guys in their 30s, 40s, oh, 50s, yeah. and so yeah. on, still reading the magazine because they've been reading they're it. They're still buying cars, sure. sure. and they're still, right. yeah, getting information like that. I agree. Um, I think that's about it, and you have any, anything to add? Well, I was just going to say things like lessons. You know, it's one thing to read, you know, Joe Satriani, tablature, you know, all over, you know. It's another thing to actually watch somebody play and stuff, so the visual Oh, yeah, stuff the black and white pages. Yep. Right. And the, yeah. right, where it'd be like, you know, I could figure that out if I heard the record, but, you know, this is all gibberish to me, you know, now you can, like, watch the guy play it and <laughs> just, oh, yeah, that's cool, oh, yeah. you know. So I, I think that's going to be kind of neat. And, yeah, like, you know, these small boutique companies where you're never going to be able to actually hear and play the instrument, if they can, you know, create good ways to demo them. I'd be much more inclined to. Well, know, which, which brings to mind one other thing that I that I did notice on the site too. In in their coverage of gear, it it, it is right now very very limited. I mean, you know, we we are purveyors here of you know, CF Martin and Rickenbacker, and we carry you know Boss Effect Spells and Electro Harmonics, um, and a variety of other products. But you know, within the gear that they represent on the website right now. Uh, a lot of that stuff isn't even touched. I don't think I saw one one mention anywhere on the entire website of Martin guitars. Yeah. You know, and the whole reason we even carry Martin here is not uh, to to make a lot of money on Martin guitars. It was that that line of guitars that I dreamt my whole life of carrying. It's right. it's a matter of pride. The company has been around now for uh, 175 years and running. You know, so. Same. And, and again, I don't, I don't know, even know what stage they are at their website, but you know, I would love to see you know, everything to be more all-encompassing, to, to bring in, in information from their previous decades of producing the magazine to, to really being encompassing to not just the people who are funneling money into the website, which I think a lot of websites fall into, is, hey, who, who's sponsoring us? They're going to get the coverage. So if... Just been the spirit of the magazine. So, yeah. Yeah. There you go. There you are. All right, that's uh, going to wrap up uh, the first Guitar Shop podcast. We're going to be back uh, oh, about every four weeks right now until we kind of uh, find our footing, then hopefully uh, more frequently than that. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If anybody has any questions whatsoever related to the podcast or about guitar shops in general, or if you know Wade's Guitar Shop here in Milwaukee and want to shoot some questions at us, uh, you can check out our website, wadesguitarshop.com. All one word, no punctuation, wadesguitarshop.com. Uh, and there's a link on the website uh, to contact us. Otherwise, you can reach us at our email address, wadesguitarshop at sbcglobal.net. Uh, we will uh, answer viewer email and questions uh, in future podcasts. So uh, I want to thank uh, Dan and Hintz here on my right. And Alex Bell here. I'm Wade Stark. Thank you, Ed. Thank you, Jocelyn. Uh, we'll be back soon. Thank you. I'm talking to you, camera A and camera B.